and welcome to This Isn't Working. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Sean. Hi, everyone. Welcome to season three. Yeah, this is season three, episode one. I don't think we even mentioned that as we were prepping. This is the first official episode of the season. Yes, yes, We were just talking about the episode, but we weren't, <laughs> that didn't come up at all. <laughs> we're, um... We're a little off our game recently, but we'll we'll get back into it. We're, we have a we have a schedule set now. We have a plan. We have a whole outline of things we want to talk about. So we're we're on there. the ball this this <laughs> season a bit more than we normally are. So the funny, so what we've decided to do is, when possible, because Tiffany and I spend so much time swapping articles back and forth every week for one another to read about a variety of topics. But the the obviously the big one is about work stuff. But um. So so what we're going to try and do, and we'll see how it goes, is share an article from the week that primarily grinds our gears a little bit, but it could be something good. Well, I hopefully hope most of them will be good. we'll have like a good news moment, <laughs> yeah. but I honestly, based on like what we normally swap, it's going to be just like things that upset us. <laughs> right. Based on the three articles we discussed today, none of them are positive. No. So <laughs> because we're recording this episode a little bit further in advance as well, we picked an article that we think is going to be a a relevant topic, you know, moving forward. Um, and it, it was something that really kind of made our stomachs turn a little bit, if we're being honest. Yeah. So the Wall Street Journal is reporting the, the future of hybrid work or how offices are changing with this future work concept where, you know, people are being called back into the office, but are still given some flexibility in terms of being able to work from home a couple days a week. And so... This new office style, which is being deemed resumercial because it's a combination, yeah, exactly, a combination of commercial real estate and residential, you know, space in one. That doesn't mean that, you know, people are like moving into their offices or anything like that. What it means, based on what the article says, is the goal is to make offices less corporate and more welcoming to people who have become accustomed to the comfort and privacy of working at home. Think couches, bistro tables, even head-down areas that might include egg-shaped chairs that face outward, more flexible spaces, and immersive tech that allows those on video calls to, quote, feel present. And then the other piece of this trend is increasing access to outdoor spaces, what they're calling air porches um, or some sort of balcony, basically where you can walk from your office space directly outdoors, um, like seamlessly. They have an artist's rendering of, of what that space might look like. Um, and it, it looks what appears to be like a classroom with like a curtain and then you just walk through the curtain and you're outside. So I hate it. I hate this a lot. (laughs) As I, as I said, when you showed it to me earlier, it's, it would be a really cool concept if it had just like come up organically to like foster creativity or like, I think we all need a little more access to the outdoors, you know, as a concept. First of all, that particular, uh, like artist rendering is not like all weather inclusive. <laughs> like, can you Correct. imagine yeah, it having looks like that? It's just straight out of Florida, California, or Texas. Yeah, you know? yeah. You can't just, you can't have like nothing between inside and outside for like anyone that experiences multiple seasons, basically. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or not efficient. Yeah. Places that used to like as we're recording this now at the end of February, um, Los Angeles, which should be a place where this is happening or, or like able to happen uh, in a sustainable way. Like, it, it you know, it shouldn't mm-hmm. be much of an issue. Uh, they're getting like ice and snow and stuff and like the whole right. Southern California area is freaking out because they're not used to this. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a, a really good point. And I wish I could show the artist rendering right now because it is pretty grim looking. Um, and I think it's the curtain in particular that's throwing me off. Me too. And I'd also like to add that when Tiffany and I worked together, we worked in a literal house together. Like yes. the yeah. office and I think we've mentioned this before, the office that we worked in, because of the the campus that we we worked on, it was an old home. Yeah. It was a highly residential campus and they had a bunch of old homes. And so at one point the university just like gave this home to our office. And so what I'd like to point out about that, though, is it did not feel like home at all. It did because not. We were both, not only from, like, the furniture and the layout and because we were both in hell, but um, it just – you knew you weren't at home. Right. Like, the, the, we had a full kitchen and everything with the dishwasher and stuff and, like, residential-type stuff in there. It was just, like, trying too hard. Yeah, very much so. But it also had to have some office stuff. 
Right. Like there were mini cubicles in some of the rooms. And like, I right. don't know. It was just filing cabinets. It just wasn't like. Right. I, I don't know about most people. I don't have a cubicle in my house. You know, um, I don't either, actually. So weird. I, and, you know, it is weird. And you have a full on recording booth in your house. That's true. With, <laughs> and that to me seems less weird than a cubicle. But yeah. I that, digress. I would so, also like to point out that in the artist rendering, there are, is still fluorescent lighting on the ceiling, um, which is like the most. There off-key. is. I didn't even notice that. Oh, yeah. That's like that's something I hate. I don't know if you ever noticed this, but when so when we did work together in that like house as our office space, mm-hmm. um, I never turned my overhead lights on. I had a lamp because I Rare, hate yeah, those I rarely lights. turned them on as well. Yeah. I brought a lamp from home as well. Yes. Um, when there wasn't enough like natural light, because it was that's actually probably one of the best parts of work around from not only do i have windows and heating and cooling in my home which i didn't have in my office right. space if you recall <laughs> but the tone of the light bulbs like they're warmer tones, yeah. i guess they're not like cool tones i guess they're not white it's not white light in here right um and that makes a huge difference because fluorescent lights t- just don't they're just you icky. know i can't think well yeah they i don't are. like them. yeah I don't like, I understand like the need for like successfully lighting a large space, like at scale and for, you know, like a cost effective way. I assume that all of that factors into it, but personally not a fan. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things. Like if you're going to try to make the workplace homey and that's the other thing, these are, what, what was the word that you said? Reza, Reza Mershal. Yeah. Part of like why that word feels icky to me is that residential is like a zoning term or it's like it indicates like how fast you can drive in a place where people live it doesn't yeah. connote home and so it's just like it's a facade yeah. from the start that's true how many people refer to their homes as their residence it, very uh, few unless they're doing it in a way where they're like my primary residence is i think that happens when i like when you register to vote you yes, know it's like what's your primary like a- residence and that's so like formal and bureaucratic, but like nobody yes. refers more formal. To, that's the way to describe it. Nobody refers yeah, to nobody. the place <laughs> they live as their residence in like a casual setting. I actually used to live by an apartment complex called the residence, but it was R E S I D E N Z. Oh, so very it was, it trendy. was supposed to be like a fancy, yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to be like a trendy place, but uh, otherwise, I definitely don't refer to it in that capacity. It's funny. Because, and we'll dive into the actual topic of today's episode, we're just a little heated, but it's funny, this topic, because we always, (laughs) (laughs) what's particularly gross about this resumercial thing is they'd rather have people, they'd rather go through all of this and redesign and spend a bunch of money on office, you know, configurations, than just let people work from home. And the question becomes, why are they doing this? And it's definitely not for their employees. I mean, wow. yes, yeah, I bet some people will be into the gimmick that this is. Be like, oh, look at out. It, the same way that, you know, millennials were once into like foosball tables in the office or <laughs> a, a keg or whatever. But what's, what I noticed is that, because I found this article on LinkedIn before I read the actual Wall Street Journal article, that you can see a bunch of people like quoting it or like commenting on it yeah. or, and stuff like that. Most of the people who are, are excited about this or think it's a great idea are like real estate developers, real estate brokers, <laughs> people who have a lot to gain by people going into office space right. that's being leased out or purchased. So it's clearly, that's what this is about, clearly. I mean, it's not to make the, tra- to ease the transition between no. work from home and return to office. I imagine that for some people that maybe have like full homes, like you and I have like you you live on your own like I have just mm-hmm. my partner my pets and things like that well you've got this right. of course but True. for people that have like a big family or something and maybe do want some work from home time away from home I imagine this would be really appealing for a lot for of sure. people in various situations but um I think that the key here is like just don't force people like if they can work from home and that's right. what they prefer leave space for that if they want a resumercial office space to opt into either full-time or hybrid time sure allow for that but the the key to like making something like this not gross is allowing people to opt in or out and not forcing everyone to be like hey we're all family yes. this is our resumercial location like we're all going to come in and sit in egg-shaped chairs no 
I think that's a really good point, actually, because I was thinking about how I love obviously working from home. We've talked about it a billion times. I think if anybody can take anything away from this show, it's that we both love working from home. Right. But sometimes it is nice to have a bit of a change of scenery. So I was thinking, you know, when the weather gets warmer, I'll just take the train into town and like go work at a coffee shop or something. Because yeah. I live by the train station. So and it'll be easy. I mean, I could drive downtown if I wanted to, but then I don't have to drive and I can work on the train and this sort of stuff. It's not very, it's like 20 minutes, but um, so that would be nice, but nobody's forcing me right, you to go into option. a physical space. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's co working space and stuff if I wanted to book one for a day and I probably won't go that far into it, but I used to do that when we um, worked together and I would work from home occasionally. I would go into a coffee shop or, um, when COVID became less bad, I would go into a coffee shop um, a couple times towards the end there. But and when the weather was nice, too. So it's just nice to have a change of scenery. I want to be the kind of person that does, but I find it so I'm a very like tethered to my desk kind of person. I really want to like take time away. And I'm trying to incorporate that more now by like in the afternoon when I kind of, you know, that like post lunch pre times up for working kind of. Uh, slump I try to like go uh, take the dog out to the park which is just across the street and like play a little fetch or something that is a great way to get a change of scenery though it doesn't have to be work related necessarily you know yeah. um so but so I guess my issue with this residential thing is the ends don't justify the means here yeah like yeah it might work for some people and some people might be into it but I feel there's some um nefarious elements behind this new trend so we'll keep an eye on this because i would imagine that it's not going away anytime soon yeah it'll um, be interesting to see like maybe what ha like what's changed or if more comes out about this by the time yeah. that we go from like recording this to when it actually airs in several weeks right um so maybe it'll be even more relevant than than we could guess that'll be always i fun. guess we could have made a whole episode <laughs> out of this we just spent like 15 minutes talking about it oh. but oh, today's okay. actual episode we had this idea a while ago because we both recently had some very positive customer service experiences. So if our, our you know, avid listeners may recall in season one, episode four, uh, we talked about crazy customer experiences because we both worked in pretty much customer facing roles our entire lives yeah. uh, or like client facing roles at minimum. So we thought, okay, this idea, but the opposite for today's episode, where we've had some good customer service experiences um, or exceptional, you know, the idea being that customer service is sometimes working, not yes. always, but sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> so before we get into our kind of specific stories, I wanted to touch on um, like customer service culture in the U.S. in particular, mm -hmm. we have a very like the customer is always right kind of culture. And yeah. with both of us having worked in customer service so much or like uh, client service as it has gotten a little more one on one in our more recent roles, um, it's it's probably true in other places as well. The customer is always right. But that's very much a U.S. concept. So having been both a customer and in customer service, how do you feel about that as a concept? Strongly disagree with the customer always being right. And I don't think that will shock you or anybody listening what? Um, I who knows me in any capacity. need time to recover from that revelation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, you know, that's not to say that you shouldn't actively try and provide good customer service. Um, but there are certainly times when people are unreasonable or have ridiculous requests or, um, you know, are rude, whatever the case may be. Um, so I, I definitely don't think the customer is always right, um, really in any capacity, in any in any scenario. I don't think that it, there's like a universal like, yes, the customer is always right. And I think people have moved away from that a little bit to an extent. Um, I feel like it's kind of like an old timey concept because people will now just like bust out their phones and record some woman in at McDonald's being a Karen and, and shame so her publicly true. on the internet. There's a guy on like TikTok who, especially when people start becoming like racist and or like sexist in public, he goes out of his way to tr like basically dox them. He doesn't like tell you where they live, but he tells you who they are, where who they work for, and then he notifies their employer with a copy of the video, which is like. Maybe not that that's not his place, but I think the people are willing justice, to call out. 
Exactly. Yeah. People are calling it willing, more willing to call it the BS. And I think, you know, management is more willing to stick up for you, especially when people are being like over the top, if they're being racist or sexist or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up, actually, because as I was adding that to the outline last night, I did have the thought of like, I, it just felt like a bit nostalgic in a way. I mean, not like I long for yeah. kind of nostalgic, but I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, definitely not that. But it felt a little like a little relicky, you know, like it was yeah. from a different time. Like I, I have definitely worked jobs where I've like been told the customer is always right. Maybe if your if your culture isn't quite like that, obviously it doesn't mean that the customer is literally like always correct and in the right. It means like do whatever they want, basically. Like they should get yeah. the exact experience that they are expecting and or sometimes demanding. And it is your job to deliver that. Um, so I've definitely worked in jobs where that's been the case, but not for years. I mean, not really since I started in like as a as a professional in the capacity that I have been for, you know, nearly eight years now. But it, it did feel kind of like outdated. It's very heavy as a concept, I feel like, on the retail or restaurant service industry side of things. Yeah. But we both work in like customer centric jobs where we spend most of our days talking or communicating with customers. And I don't know about you, but like my boss is pretty like, nope, that's not right. Don't do that. (laughs) He's like cool with me pushing back on customers when they make unreasonable requests or have unreasonable complaints in a professional way. But right. It's more of a like, let's arrive at a consensus kind of thing. Yeah. It's like give and take type situation. Yeah. And like, you shouldn't not go out of your way like you should try to deliver what they're looking for but like you should both also be on the same page about like what's reasonable and what's uh kind of a a reach request maybe or what's just really not feasible maybe not now maybe not really ever but just being open about having those conversations i was just gonna say made me think of something that i've started doing in recent months where um i ask people especially if it's over an email to just tell me what what they want basically yeah and then my response is and then I can let you know what we can and cannot accommodate. Yeah. <laughs> um, one, to like temper expectations up front. But two, it allows me some time to figure out what can we actually do or what's reasonable yeah. for us to do um, and talk to other people if I need to to figure that out. But like that can't happen to the, like the person behind the counter at, you know, McDonald's or Starbucks. Be like, go ahead and tell me your order and I'll tell you what we can and right. can't accommodate. <laughs> So I'm sure there are cir- circumstances like that, but it's not the same, obviously. I don't think that we're like out of this period of the cultural moment, but I feel like for a time, I don't know, maybe in like the mid 2010s, it was very um, like a lot of things that were going viral were like really crappy customers and either yeah. other customers like in line filming people like uh, mistreating employees Um, as they like interacted while like ordering food or whatever Um, or sometimes like other employees filming an interaction between a fellow employee and a customer and I feel like there was just like such this uh, moment of like entitled customers as a as a meme Mm -hmm. both the like Karens but also I remember a bunch of like I don't know just like bloated white dudes like demanding whatever smoothie they wanted and some poor kid behind the counter like we don't have that. I can't just like make it out of of thin thin air. air, Yeah. 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 And them just being like, I work so hard, blah, blah, blah. Like, why won't you just do this? And they're like, I like, I would love to basically to like get you out of my face, but I, yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Yeah. I would love this interaction to end as, as quickly as humanly possible. That's a really good point. And I don't know if you've caught this, but I've noticed a couple of times now that I'm seeing things, um, where the act the, like the irate customer is recording and uploading thinking that people on the internet are going to side with them and then you go oh, to the yeah. comment section it's like a crucifixion they're just ruining this person's <laughs> life because they're so unreasonable right um, yeah and then there was that guy who i think he worked at ikea i think you know who i'm talking about with the mustache and he's they'll be like yes. oh, you just you've lost a customer or you know can oh, you go funny. search in the back for this he's good yeah he's a comedian now i think but oh, good for um him. Some there was one where he was like, uh, somebody asked him to do something, and then they were like, he he said he couldn't do, it. and they were like, well, I'm gonna get you fired. He's like, I'm one week into a two week notice period, like <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> My last day is in like three days. He's like, I'm a part time employee. You can't do anything. 
Yeah. Um, the, uh, but yeah, that did happen a lot. The idea of like the customer having so much power and it goes back to, at least in the U.S., this the customer is always right mentality that we all kind of have. And sometimes they just like they can't be accommodated, even if the workers really wanted to, whether to just like smooth out their own life or to like end a toxic interaction abruptly like they just can't and people get so entitled about it so they can be really it can be really um uh, like emotions can get really high for sure it's actually i was thinking kind of depressing that in the basically year since we put out that first episode about crazy customers it hasn't seemingly gotten much better right um <laughs> Which is the purpose of today's episode to to discuss when customer service does work and yes. when people provide you customer service, that sort of stuff. So I, obviously we've worked in customer service and, and really still do in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, God, pretty much all of my jobs ever. That's kind of depressing. Um, <laughs> I've never had like a uh, like an IT job where I don't interact with customers and only maybe interact with internal people. No, I've um, always been in customer service in some capacity and wow i'm i'm quite good at that generally one because yeah. i'm like very much a people pleaser <laughs> so i'm yeah, like whatever yeah, you yeah. want i'll make it happen thank you so much um for sure but there are definitely times where like that's been oh just really toxic you know how so i used to work i've, I've talked before about how i worked in a uh, a claims call center for a bank oh god yeah and that was like the worst and like sometimes actually I would that made to, that was on the episode, the crazy customer one. Cause you talked yes. about that one lady who yelled at me. Yeah. Transaction. Yeah. Transaction stuff. Yeah. Woo. Good times. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that was some of my like worst customer service experience because they very much did have a culture of the customer is always right. And like, I couldn't, mm. um, I couldn't terminate a conversation. Like I couldn't end a call. The customer had to, like, it was against the rules for me to like end a call, even if I were being like completely abused. Um, so, you know, great, sure, totally great reasonable. morale, yeah. great work environment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was, and, and there were things that obviously we couldn't accommodate and especially with banking and people's money, like again, mm. emotions get really high, For sure. um, but it just was like, it was some of the most uh, like deliver whatever the customer wants kind of work that I've ever done. And it's. One of the things that we had to do was we had this whole like paragraph long script. And I'm sure that you've had this experience if you've ever called like an internet company, a bank, like any mm -hmm. corporation really, where it's like, thank you so much for being a valued ex customer. We love your business and appreciate you so much deeply and blah, 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 blah. What can I do for you? And it's like, first of all, you can stop with that scripted nonsense because right. I know you don't feel that way. This is a paycheck for you and that's fine. But like, let's just get past that. And then when you hang up, it's like, thank you again so much for being a valued ex customer of this company, blah, blah, blah. We love you. Right. You're our favorite. You're the only person we care about. Goodbye now. Like, it's yeah, that's my experience every time I call Anthem, knowing that I'm not going to be happy at the end of the phone call. <laughs> it's so over the top. Like, I I know from having had to say those things that, like, they don't have a choice. Like, they have to. Right. Yeah. But it's, like, I just wish we could all, like, take a step back. And I feel like now companies are trying to, like, out-nice each other. Like, the, the, <laughs> the um, you know, thank you so much for being a valued customer. You, it used to just be like that. And now I feel right. like they go on and on and on about like the value that you bring to them as a customer and like what they would love to do for you. And like throughout the call, sometimes it's like, um, I, I need to put you on hold, please, valued customer, ma'am. Like, let me just and I'm like, Ugh, no, stop. Just stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just put me on hold. Yeah. Just <laughs> tell me you need to put me on hold. Maybe give me a time frame if you have a guess. Otherwise, I will just be here. Right. Yeah. Patiently waiting. Yes. Listening to this ter <laughs> terrible elevator music you have me listening to. Um. Okay, so as as people who have been customers, which is also part of everyone's life. That's true. I have um, done that. <laughs> we have had some really great customer service experiences. I personally am very like brand loyal, so if I have a really good experience, like I am the kind of person that will like I'll go fill out the review. I'll go, because I know that those things make a difference to employees a lot of times, sometimes not as much as they should, but sometimes they do. And if you give me like mediocre to incredible service, I will be like, yeah, they did a great job. It's fine. It's funny you say that because Anthem, 
health insurance obviously does this sort of thing every time I call. And I always make a point to be like the customer service rep was outstanding. I just hate this organization. Yes. <laughs> with the fire of a thousand suns. I do, um, I do. So it's like anytime you get to the questions about the rep, I was like, outstanding, perfect. I would die for this person's firstborn, right. like that sort of thing. But then it's like, any comments about your service with Anthem? I'd be like, it's terrible. I want to die. American health insurance is a scam. Like, <laughs> you're actively trying to kill me. So I definitely get that. And my my perception is that most of the time, customer service is fine or it's completely good. There's no, most people in their day to day lives, don't really think about it that much. However, my perception as well is that Americans are more likely to say something if the experience is bad rather than go out of their way to give somebody like a glowing review or tell their manager, whoever that, you know, they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm probably guilty of that as well. You know, where you're more inclined to to speak up if something's not right or right. bad. I've never yelled at somebody in customer service. Oh that's God, for no. sure. Uh, even if they get my like order incorrect or, you know, have an attitude or whatever. I'm just like most people have bad days. It just doesn't, doesn't bother me. But yeah. if I have to be like, oh, I actually ordered this sandwich or this whatever, you know, kind of thing, then it's usually not a big deal. And the person 99% of the time is like. My bad. Let me fix that. And right. then that's the end of and the situation, it. you know. Um, but at the, on the flip side of that, basically what you were saying about being brand loyal, word of mouth and reputation is really critical, especially uh -huh. for small businesses to grow. So I don't know if I would consider myself necessarily to be brand loyal. There are certain things where I don't compromise on specific brands. Uh -huh. um, but generally speaking, I'm definitely the kind of person who like shops off label or we'll just kind of go with what's most affordable um but there's definitely exceptions to that that general rule of thumb um i have just like i have pretty high standards for things that i buy i prefer to like invest into in something that will last and that's so I a good do, point. like it depends on what i'm buying as well for yes, sure exactly yeah like if i'm just buying pasta at the store i'm not particularly brand loyal like, right i'll just get yeah the you're pasta not like a diehard Berea, yeah, I know. Whatever it is, that, yeah, I will. Yeah, I will do whatever it. you know. I will just get the pasta shape that I am looking for off the shelf, and that's fine. But for like bigger purchases, I do try to find like companies that I can get behind. The B Corps, like I talked about in uh, the bonus episode, like I try to find those when and where I can. I try to shop small and local and support like you know the local economy versus like a big box i know i've mentioned many times i am part of the amazon problem i will also yep, obviously same. opt into <laughs> that on occasion but i try I, I i make the effort and so when i find a company that um has good products and maybe even if like if i had an issue with like oh well actually you know this didn't ship and it says that it shipped and I got everything else, but I'm missing this one item. And they're like, yeah, totally. I'll send it out, like dispatch it right now. It, you know, that's, those are the kinds of companies that I like to do business with. And I will keep going back to them, even if there was that like tiny mistake, because I know that they'll make good on their product and they stand behind it. And so like, that's, that's what I mean when I say like, I'm brand loyal. Once, once I do the work of finding sense. something that I like and feel good about, uh, I will, if I, like have a need for bed sheets. I have a company that I go to for those kinds of things because I have done the work. I enjoy the product and I've had good experience. I'm going to need you to send me that. I'm actually in the market for new sheets. So oh my God, we'll we just got that offline. amazing ones. Yes, I <laughs> will follow up. That. <laughs> Please follow up. <laughs> That's a good point actually though about certain things. It really depends on the product. Like I've driven the same brand of car for the last like 10 years. Oh, okay. Basically. Um, and I've had too many cars in the last 10 years because I'm dumb. But I, it made me think that I have an uncle who's like an avid Honda Accord purchaser. So like he's owned them since the 90s. Like every time he's ready for a new car and he doesn't like, if I recall, he doesn't like drive until it dies, but he keeps it several years for sure. Then he usually trades it in or sells it and then he gets the new one. That's just what he does. <laughs> um, so some people are pretty much like that um not that i'm not open to purchasing a different brand of car than the next time i have to buy one but 
pretty set with what I like about the brand that I've been using. And I'm also a Honda person. So, I, you know, I'm pretty adamant about purchasing those types of vehicles. Cause I know yeah. they're reliable. I or know it it's like Toyota people like, and that sort of stuff. It creates like a baseline where if you're like, okay, I like this and I'm happy with it and I've always been happy with it and I have no real problems. Yes. And, and your question is like, if, if I'm buying another of this type of product, like a car, for example, you're not buying like one a year, probably most people. Um, that is correct. So it's going to be correct. a while <laughs> and you have yeah. this new, you have this like baseline standard of like, if I buy another of the same type, will it meet those same criteria? Will I still have this great experience over the long term? Or like, has their quality faltered? Are people now saying For this sure. X car is the new Honda Accord or whatever? And then you can look yes. into that and deter- like make a you know in, um, and i'm the type of person choice. who would be open to doing that exactly and yeah. actually perfect segue into my first example of like awesome customer service yes. that i didn't write down but uh the last time i got a car was in 2020 so it was like full covid uh, which was probably a really dumb time to buy a car considering how little i drive i didn't know you bought but, a car then yeah i i had like a really dumb habit of leasing cars this is why i've had so many cars in like such oh. a short period of time Long story short, this lease is up soon. I'm just going to buy the car because I never drive. The car is less than 20,000 miles. It's ridiculous in three years. Um, So anyways, but so I was like a little bit nervous about doing this. Luckily, as you know, I used to work at a car dealership, a different one than the one I went to, but I still, my old boss was at this one. So she had it set up where I did still have to go in, but literally when I got there, the exact car I wanted was ready, like at the door. Oh, um, in the delivery zone. Yeah. Um, all I had to do was go in and sign some paperwork, but most of it was done ahead of time, like the credit check and all this sort of stuff. So I was only in there for like 40 minutes maybe. Huh. And then they're like, while we're sorting this, do you want to like go take the car on a test drive to make sure everything's fine? Even though it was like, this, this is the car I was getting. Right. And I did. I just drove it around really quick, came back. Uh, but I was like in and out and it was amazing. Um, and that's partially because I knew somebody who set it up that way for me partially because there were new protocols with COVID. Yeah. But I know people sometimes spend hours and hours in a dealership yeah. because dealerships are scams. Um, just keep buying a car. It could take four, eight, ten hours. You know, it's depressing. When I worked at a dealership, there were times when I would come in, like sometimes we'd have later starts. In, yeah. In my house, somebody would start early. So the sales department would be open, and I'd see the same people there as when I left, like after my oh, shift that dark. night. And you're just like – Dude, that car is not worth it. <laughs> um, well, I've only bought so that one was a really good experience though. And it was like, um, I we just like we needed a car, like we didn't have one. My partner and I yeah. share a car, and we we have for years now because we don't drive a whole lot. Um, right. And I we had been like borrowing family cars, and then all the family was back, so we had no car, and I had a job yeah. to get to, <laughs> and so we like. We had to go. We had to get a car. We borrowed a car. We met my dad at a dealership. I had done all the research beforehand, and I was like, this car says that it is, like, good mileage, a good brand, and, like, doesn't need a lot of maintenance. And I know nothing about cars. I don't really care about cars. I kind of wish I could live a life where I didn't need a car and, right. like, still be, like, you know, things would be convenient, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I, like, don't really care what I drive. I just want it to, like, function and not need a lot of fuss because I'm not here for that. And so I did all this research and everything, and I was like, this is the kind of car that I want. Like, this is our price range. My dad, We met my dad at the dealership, and I have spent, as a child, I spent many, many hours in car dealerships with my parents as they were like, this or that or this or that or this or that yeah. over and over and over again. And so we went in. Uh, we, like, found the like a couple of the exact car that i was looking for one was like marked cheaper by mistake actually but it was cheaper so we were like that one (laughs) and they like had to honor the mistake their fault whatever and my dad was and we're like signing the paper and my dad was like i can't believe you just like came in today and like bought a car and i was like i needed a car you know and he was like yeah like i have to go to work (laughs) yeah he was like I I have bought many cars and I've never done it this quickly and I was like I I had a need dad like I just needed to get going <laughs> you know I that's didn't the thing too spend like doing for cars in particular doing research or as much of it ahead of time as possible is really the key the the least amount of time you spend at the dealership the more likely you yep. are to get in and out quickly and not buy some nonsense add on 
Yeah, so that was a good experience, which I know most people listening are probably like, I had a terrible experience at a car dealership. I believe you. I worked in one. But yeah, that was a a really interesting experience. And because it was so positive, I was in and out. Like I literally went and dropped my car off. Came and like was home within an hour with the, the new car. It's like cool. Now I'm done. Like, oh my god, that's amazing. Especially for it really like, is. a car customer service experience. Here's a a brand loyalty kind of story. Another great experience I've had. I I wasn't really like looking to be necessarily brand loyal in this case, but we've had such a good experience with them that I like when I have a need for a product they sell, I will go to them first. So the company is Bristol, right. and mm-hmm. we have a whole menagerie of animals, as our listeners um, are aware. You know, sometimes those animals are messy and you need to clean up the carpet when such messes occur. And so we have this like pet spot carpet cleaner thing. It's this like chonky little machine. It's got like the soapy water, et cetera. And you like, you know, suck up water, scrub it, et cetera. So we bought one of those years ago and we don't like overly use it. It's always like stored properly. Like we clean it, we take care of it. We, you know, only use it as needed. And I always register with the warranty situation. Mm-hmm. Like I go through that whole annoying rigmarole at the beginning because I I'm just, then, then we're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> nobody our age is doing this shit but us. <laughs> Listen, I would recommend it though, because if you take it, like it's amazing. five minutes it to do that, it's very annoying. Especially for expensive couple. products. Yeah, yes. for sure. And so I went uh, we I went to use it once and the like the hose had like cracked. It had broken. And oh, I was weird. like, well okay. that's not helpful cuz that now the suction <laughs> doesn't work and I've got this you know, pet mess I'm trying to clean up. And so I like went back into my email and like found the thing and tried, you can order like replacement parts from this company, but the part that I needed, the hose, um, it's not replaceable. It's just not an interchangeable part. So I messaged them and just said like, Hey, here's what happened. Uh, like here's some pictures and like, can you send like a special replacement part? I can't seem to order it. And within like 24 hours, they were like, oh, actually, can you just update your ad? Like, are you still at this address? We'll just send you an entirely Mm -hmm. new unit. And I was like, I'm sorry, you'll do what? And they were like, yeah, that's not an interchangeable part, unfortunately. But, you know, like, it's not your fault that it happened. And we just want to replace the the unit. So I had to update my address because we had moved and I we had bought this thing after like, you know, three places Mm -hmm. prior or whatever. So I sent them an updated address. They sent it to me free of charge. I think I had a new carpet cleaner within like 48 hours from the time that I reported a problem. It was incredible. That is pretty incredible, Um, especially for the product you're describing, which if you want to say the brand, I don't know if these brands want to like sponsors one day. Honda, if you're listening. Bissell, if you're out there. (laughs) But Bissell's can be kind of pricey. I don't think they're quite as expensive as like a Dyson or Shark or whatever. And the fact that I know multiple vacuum brands is crazy. Um, (laughs) I'll say that just right off the bat. We are so old. (laughs) We are. Um, But that's a pretty solid situation. Um, I totally didn't expect it. And it's one of those like, exactly, as you say, it catches you off guard because you're not, you go in asking for one thing and you walk away with more than what you've asked for. Yeah. um, Which doesn't always happen um these days sometimes they kind of fight you on stuff um they did the like you're a great customer kind of thing but it wasn't like overly saccharine like i didn't feel gross hearing yeah, it they yeah. weren't like dear valued tiffany we love you deeply with all our heart yeah here's a yeah. new product it was just like our product shouldn't do that and here's a new one and it was like shaped a little differently was it a newer model or something yeah and i think that yeah. they had like addressed that issue in the intervening years got it. because yeah, i yeah. think that what it was like too tight the way that like you wrapped the hose and i think that that's like what right. cracked it and there was just like a little bit more give so that there wasn't that much pressure in that spot so i think that it was like maybe an issue that other people had experienced and they just like fixed it capitalism it. sometimes works as well yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's funny because yeah that, i mean well first of all that's just awesome because the other experience that i jotted down was kind of like that as well, where it was not expected. Long story short, I don't know if you're familiar with Fanatics. It's a yeah. like sports apparel stuff company. Yeah, I knew who they were, but I'd never purchased anything from them. And so, you know, I what I was looking for was these like baby onesies. My friend was having a baby, and so I was looking for like college little onesies. And so I ordered them, and I was I was having them shipped here so I could 
wrap it all that sort of stuff. So long story short, like a day or two later, I got an email to say my order was canceled, like inexplicably. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm like, that's strange. Um, and I, I wasn't really sure why, because it didn't give me a reason. It just said the order was canceled. So, and then it had a phone number if I had a question. So it was like, well, I don't want to have to like go through and do all of this stuff again. So yeah. I called the number um, and was just like really confused. I was like, what is up with this? And the lady's like, huh, that makes no sense. She like couldn't figure it out why it was canceled either. There was no reason. I thought maybe it was because I, I paid through like PayPal or something. Okay. And so maybe they just thought it was like a bogus scammy charge or something yeah I, I feel like that's happened before so anyway she reinstated the order or like re she couldn't she said she couldn't reinstate the exact order but she reordered it for me like she did it oh, um, nice. and then they uh gave me a partial refund and then she had them they paid for the shipping which wasn't included originally and so then they also gave me like a 30 percent off thing for the next time i shop with them oh wow and so it was nuts because like they were giving us i all i had all i wanted her to do was reinstate the order i didn't yeah. need any of this other stuff but yeah she gave me like a 20 percent discount i can't remember exact 25 percent maybe and then paid for the shipping which was like i don't know six or eight bucks or whatever and then she paid for expedited shipping too so i got it even faster i got it basically when i was expecting the original order and all of that was done in the span of like 15 minutes it was That's not amazing. a long call at all. It was incredible. So fanatics, if you're listening, crazy. I, I did, that was one situation where I gave her like outstanding remarks because I got yeah. one of those like Surveys. survey emails. Have you ever gotten a survey where it's like, how should we thank, you know, Rebecca for her customer service? Should we give her a $5 tip, a free coffee? You know, have you ever had one of those? I don't know if I ever had. I don't remember like which companies or brands I've done those for, but mm-hmm. I've definitely had those where the follow-up is not just like rate your experience with this. You could give her this person a raise. That would be great. <laughs> so when there is like an other box where you can oh, fill where you in, can write that's in. what I say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, give them a raise. I've left a couple reviews on things where I've, I've said explicitly this person deserves a raise. And I've always wondered if if any time that I've commented that has been an influencing factor in that person getting a raise or a promotion, my guess is probably not. But um, whenever I get one of those circumstance situations and it's just like crazy good, I, I definitely say just like do that. Actually, <laughs> I did this once in college. I got a – did you have course surveys? I'm guessing in college at the yeah. end you would take a survey. One time I had a class that was just so good and the professor was so dope. Um I wrote in her review, I was like, give, give her a raise. My guess is that probably didn't happen. She was a tenured professor, if I recall correctly. But, um, <laughs> it's a nice sentiment, though. I, I hope that people understand that because everything's so money-driven in the U.S. in particular, that that's such a high compliment where you say, like, this person has earned or deserves more financial compensation. Yes. You know, to really indicate that. When I've had those surveys where it is like, uh, what should we do to thank her for her great job? If I can fill in the blank and say, give her a raise, I do that or him get like, give them a raise. Mm -hmm. But if not, because I've had it where it's like just three things and it's like very like short term kind of reward. So like a gift, card, a coffee, like uh, I don't I don't remember what else has been offered, but I try to pick what I think would be like the highest monetary value. Or I try to be right, like, yeah. let them choose. Like, <laughs> yeah. Also, that that's that's a, a good way to do it too. Yeah, because so that was don't a know. good experience. Yeah. Unexpected. Yeah, that's great. And I, I wish I remembered that person's name. I don't. I did remember it at the time of the survey, thankfully, because it doesn't always tell you. Sometimes it'll yeah just use generic like your rep's name, and I assume that they have some way of attaching it to that person. I'm sure. But um, whenever I do, I try and get the person's name or remember it so I can leave a good review with their actual name in it. (laughs) That uh, leads directly to one of my uh, like longest term customer service satisfaction Mm -hmm. experiences. (laughs) So when we lived uh, in an an apartment, we had this Mm -hmm. grocery store that was just down the street and my partner and I would go like every Sunday morning because I, this was well pre COVID. I hate grocery shopping. I hate when Mm. people like let their children run amok. I hate when people Uh, stand and stare at the shelves for like 10 minutes and are in In my way. In the dead ass center of the aisle. Yeah. I just, I, 
I loathe the entire experience. So we would go <laughs> early on. The store last week is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> we would go early on Sundays and just, I was like, let's go, go, go. And of course I'm like a really high strung person and my partner is very like, blah, blah, blah. So like he didn't care. And he was like, you need to calm down though. Uh, but like any time we could get in a lane where there was no bagger, I would run to the mm-hmm. end and bag because one, I don't, I don't mind bagging groceries at all. I'm not like a someone needs to bag these for me. Like, no. Nope, I I'll honestly it prefer it because I, I like to put it. things where they make sense logically and keep cool things together. And then yes. when I'm gonna put stuff away, I was like, this bag has the cool stuff. Yeah, that sort of stuff. That yes. sort of thing. I used to do this like uh, when we were little. Like my mom would send me to the end if there wasn't a bagger available, and she had a very yep particular way that she liked it packed and i like have maintained that in my like neurotic lifestyle (laughs) and so like if there's no bagger i would like run to the end so that i could do the bagging and no one would like come up and try to help i'd be like no no no, i've got it thank you so much but at this grocery store always working the same shift was this like high school kid and he is the best grocery bagger i have ever had (laughs) who wasn't me (laughs) i wonder where he is now I if he listen, graduated to cashiering or what, <laughs> buddy? If you're listening, love you, never change. He eventually advanced to like the checkout, and I was like deeply ah, impressed. he did okay. But we would, um, we would go to his lane, and then he would like shoo away the bagger and let me bag my own groceries. He was amazing, and so every week on like our receipt, we get the like fill out the survey if you had exceptional service or whatever and every week on the drive home i would go fill it out i would shout him out by name and be like this kid is the best he deserves some kind of reward blah 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 he needs to run the store and i would tell him that's amazing every week i'm like i filled out your survey like i put your name in it and they get entered at least at the time they got entered to win like a gift card or like a basket or something like that and he actually won it a couple of times he was great (laughs) (laughs) i'm glad because i don't know if this store was a small grocery chain or national or whatever okay yeah i I think i know which one you're talking about honestly it's not my head well it could be too based on where you live anyways um the the point there is that it's not always super easy to do that in small businesses and i'm yeah. thinking because they don't always have stories if i usually just tip more like my old yeah. barber when i before i moved my favorite bartender before i moved at like one of these bars i went to um so I, that's like the the way that i can show thanks to that person because yeah. i'm never going to interact with their boss or their owner or whatever probably um because it's you don't always get like a, a survey or yeah, that's manager true. around that you can pay a compliment to or anything like that. Um, so when possible, you know, just, you know, do the work directly and pay the person yourself when yes, you can. Absolutely. And it's not weird. As a side note, because this has never happened to me, probably because of who I am as a person, but have you ever come across a circumstance where you know like people give their mailman or their mail carrier a gift at Christmas time or like give stuff to people like that they i i just think about when i worked at the restaurant in college in particular there was this guy who really really liked one of the the servers and probably too much she really pretty girl that kind of thing and he used to bring her like cards on valentine's day and all sort of stuff (laughs) yeah a little little bit a little bit gauche but um he would like bring in stuff and like sometimes people he was like here's cookies i made i was thinking about you and this sort of stuff and i'm like okay don't love that crazy i've never thought about doing anything quite like that but it's i always wondered like i don't know it's just one of those things you think about sometimes with people like god this person brought in my coworker like cupcakes today why or gives them like an extra gift card or whatever um or like if it's their birthday or a holiday or something so i don't know if that's ever happened that sort of things that it can borderline and be a little bit weird i think in the context you know for sure um i don't know that but I've i ever- i th- I'm tr- I'm like racking my brain. I don't think I've ever done that. And in large part, probably because I overthink everything. And I'm like, would this be weird? Would they be like, ugh, this crazy oh, woman for brought sure. me cookies or, you know, whatever. But like, maybe if I were like. Yeah. Even weirder for me, I'm a single guy. It would be super strange. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just if I'm like baking people cookies and taking them, in, you know, it would be particularly strange. But I noticed it's particularly like, this might be a generational thing. It was typically older people who would do this sort okay. of thing. And I feel like the the classic one is, you know, you get you give your mail carrier something at Christmas time. I, I don't know. Maybe that's I maybe that's just something that happened in my neighborhood. 
where people were like the same mail carrier for years and years and years. I have never done that, but I have wondered. Like, I've also never done that. To? Okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> well, it's good to know that maybe your customers also hated you or didn't like you enough to give you something extra <laughs> like that. I wondered, I think that, so when I did the uh, the bank, I I think that they did do that like random automated, like you've been selected for a survey after this call. If you'd mm, like to take it, like yeah. press one. But I don't, mm. I definitely like, never heard about any of that if there were any results i don't even know for sure that it happened but like maybe just maybe that was like my only potential experience with it i think it goes back to what we said at the beginning where people are more inclined to say something if it's really bad but if it's an after the fact thing um you know then it it's kind of nice because there's no pressure on, because I think part of it too is that people want to say really nice things, but the more they say really nice things and the more you have like leverage to justify a promotion or a pay rise or something. Yeah, that could be. Maybe I'm overanalyzing it in that context, but I don't know if I've ever had a, worked at a place that had a survey like that. Um, yeah, like I, I said, the, have, the but... bank maybe would have been the only one, but I'm not, Yeah, those are random and I'm not entirely sure that it would have been like, for my department ever i was like very very I low see. at that place yeah. so i i don't know customer service is sometimes working and i honestly think the more we were talking it's most of the time working almost yeah because i think and that if it's um as you said if it is working it goes it like flies under the radar like people aren't really yeah dealing with it, talking about it, aware of it. It's basically anytime I buy something online now or like anytime you go out to eat, like there's always a survey now, it seems like. Um, yeah, but survey fatigue for sure. Yeah, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I just like, I don't want to fill out a review, but then I like inevitably will. Yeah. Like especially for if stuff on like Amazon or whatever, I typically don't. No. Although there are products sometimes that I purchase where I'm like, I got to review this because it's so good. Yeah. Um, that's pretty rare though. But again, it, it's that it's that concept. I don't think most people in their dates they work are expecting showers of praise for yeah. simply doing their job. I, I think it's just they're more we're more likely to hear about it or it goes viral or whatever if it's like a crazy Karen, crazy customer experience type of situation. Yeah. And it's as as people who have worked in customer service for many, many years now in various capacities, it's it's it feels good also, I think, to like praise people when it is like an exceptional experience like i emailed yeah. bissell back and was like this is incredible like thank you so much for taking care of this for like thinking to update my address for just sending this out with no questions like i didn't have to justify what happened they were just like the product shouldn't do that have a new one so like i will go out of my way to talk about those things and having worked in customer service i think plays a big part in that i try to be like i don't know what this could do for someone if anything but they deserve more there's probably some brands that are like universally considered to be like such a good quality you know that that people will go out of the way to talk about them but i don't know if most you know brands or companies or services experience that level of you know dedication yeah there's also those businesses and brands and companies that are universally hated right. and <laughs> disrespected but yeah it's it's i guess yeah i think i think it's most of the time working i think so I, and to be honest if i were in a situation where i was in retail or a service industry or whatever i'm fine with just like middle of the road you know yes. like i want to do a good job and provide what I can, but like, you don't have to compliment me. You don't have to be upset with me either. Like if you're just like polite, respectful, and that's, you know, reciprocated and you tip appropriately, you're my ideal customer. Yes. Um, <laughs> and maybe that's a me thing, but I would imagine that a lot of people would feel that way too. Yeah. I think that um, maybe like what's underrated about customer service is that like the stories you don't remember are the system working. That's a great point because nine out of 10 times, that was my experience. It was middle of the road, didn't have anything bad or good happen per se. And it was yeah. just kind of, it, it was what it was. But um, I do remember when things were like really bad or the always. occasions where they've been exceptionally good. That's very true. Yeah. yeah it's hard to to forget the, the particularly bad, crazy. Right. I mean, I haven't worked in a restaurant in many years now and- uh, I'll never forget some of the yeah. <laughs> the characters that, that would come in through there. 
For sure. I mean, we'll never forget some of the experiences we had when we worked together as well oh, with some no, of the no, students no. that we worked with, um, and prospective students. These are burnt into my brain Could, forever. God, they'll unfortunately never leave my memory. Uh, I don't think we have much of a choice there. <laughs> so with that being said, um, I'd love to know what types of good customer service experiences people who are listening to this episode have had. Yeah. Um, even if they're not extraordinary. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to hear how people show appreciation for the customer service employees in their life. Or if you've never really thought about doing it or how it could be beneficial, you know, take a moment, maybe fill out that email survey if you get a product you're really uh, happy with. And or if you have a, a positive experience with someone who helps you through something, even if it's, uh, you know, just a, a quick little order and all you want is is little baby X, but they give you Y, Z and the whole rest of the alphabet is part of it. Absolutely. And that pulls us into, God help us, next episode of the season where we're going to tackle the latest, and I even wrote vomit on <laughs> our notes here, quiet trend. <laughs> There's another quiet trend Some somehow. We're not going to talk about it right now, but oh, next we episode will. we will because we're pretty confident it's not going anywhere. God help us all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, the the quiet trends are are here to stay. It seems we we tried really hard to ignore it, but here we are. Here we are. Every single time we try to ignore it, and then it, it becomes uh, viral or enters into the the greater societal lexicon. Yes, so that'll be fun and probably a little infuriating next week for us to chat about. Yeah, prepare to strap in for that one. Yes, and in the meantime, uh, follow us on socials. Give us a review if you have had a good experience with this podcast. We would love it. Great um, plug. Oh, my goodness. Great plug. <laughs> Didn't even have to script that. It just came organically. <laughs> <laughs> it felt very natural because it was. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, normally I have to like write these things down or I, I get nervous and I forget. But that one just made sense, you know. So give <laughs> us did. a review on the podcast platform of your choice where you tune into us uh, every week. Give us a rating so that we can reach more listeners. Awesome. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.